Plasmapheresis, or plasma withdrawal, is a process used when a donor has special antibodies in his plasma. A blood donation can be separated into two main parts. If blood is allowed to stand undisturbed, it will settle out by gravity with the red cells on the bottom and the plasma on the top. The red cells are the essential component in a blood transfusion. The plasma appears as a straw-coloured liquid. Human plasma is the only known source of a number of life-saving proteins, which, when concentrated, can be used in the treatment and prevention of many diseases. Human plasma is also the only source of the proteins needed for the accurate grouping of blood. These essential plasma products are obtained from special plasma donors by a procedure called plasmapheresis, in which the donor gives blood, the red cells are then separated and returned to the donor's circulation. Only the plasma, with its many valuable constituents, is retained by the blood bank. Plasma donors are usually discovered during routine testing of ordinary donors. They are contacted personally and told of the importance of their particular plasma. The difference between an ordinary donation and a plasmapheresis donation is explained, together with all the precautions necessary to ensure that the red cells returned to the donor are positively identifiable as his own. Every blood test and blood bag is labelled with the donor's name and each blood pack has an identical serial number on each section. The donor is invited to join the plasmapheresis program. An interview with a medical officer follows to ensure that the donor is in good health and that the donor fully understands all that is involved. The donor signs a consent form which is witnessed by the doctor. Every plasmapheresis donor has a record card which also identifies the special purpose for which the plasma is to be used. To avoid delays and inconvenience, plasmapheresis donors are bled by appointment. The donor is identified and appropriate labels are made out. The labels detail both the donor and the purpose for which the plasma is to be used. A donation number on a sheet of stickers is allotted and one of these stickers will be used on every blood test, blood bag and record made during the course of the donation. The donor signs each of the labels. There are four labels required for each plasmapheresis donation. One for the red cell pack, one for the plasma pack and one for each of the laboratory specimens. The nurse witnesses the signatures. A routine blood test is performed to ensure that the donor is not anemic. Anemia is by far the most common blood disorder. One of the many ways anemia is indicated is in the level of haemoglobin, the red pigment, in the blood. Before each blood donation, the level of haemoglobin is tested. If it is low, the donor is said to be anemic. A full blood count is requested and the blood donation is deferred until the haemoglobin value has been restored to normal. The solution of blood is placed in a photoelectric absorptiometer, which converts the intensity of the colour into a haemoglobin level. The donor lies on a comfortable, specially designed couch. A cuff is applied to one arm and a doctor measures the donor's blood pressure. If the blood pressure is not within normal limits, the donation is deferred and further medical investigation undertaken. 
The doctor checks with the donor that the four labels are his before attaching the labels to him. A suitable vein is selected and a local anaesthetic is shot into the skin over the vein using a special compressed air gun. The administration of the anaesthetic is quick, virtually painless and so effective that the donation can be commenced almost immediately. Approximately 500 to 600 milliliters of whole blood are collected at each donation. It takes about 10 minutes to fill the blood pack. Once the donation has commenced, two of the labels attached to the donor are fixed to the blood and plasma bags. The blood bag contains a special anticoagulant solution to prevent the blood from clotting. The bag is gently rocked to mix the blood and the anticoagulant. When the donation is complete, specimens are collected for laboratory tests so that the antibody level of the plasma can be monitored. The full blood pack is removed and a saline drip is connected to keep the needle in the donor's vein open while the plasma is separated from the red cells. Red cells will eventually settle to the bottom of the blood pack, but this takes some hours. This same process can be achieved in a much shorter time by spinning the blood pack in a centrifuge. The blood pack is placed in a centrifuge bucket and accurately balanced against another bucket. Centrifuges may warm up at high speeds, so a refrigerated centrifuge is used to prevent overheating of the blood. The centrifuge temperature is maintained at 20 degrees Celsius. The blood pack is spun at 3000 revs per minute which produces a force 2,000 times that of gravity. After 10 minutes centrifugation, the red cells have been deposited at the bottom of the pack. To separate the plasma from the red cells, the tubing connecting the two bags is opened, and using a plasma expressor, gentle pressure is applied from below, and the plasma flows into the second bag. The two bags form a completely closed system joined by integral plastic tubing. Nothing, not even air, can get in or out and the contents are therefore never exposed to bacterial contamination. When the plasma is transferred, the tubing is heat sealed and the two bags separated. Before the red cells are returned to the donor's circulation, maximum care must be taken to identify the red cells properly. The nurse compares the label on the pack with the label still attached to the donor. The donor confirms his name and signature and the doctor double checks the labels. Finally, the serial number on the plastic tubing is verified. Only when all this meticulous checking has been carried out are the cells hung up, the saline drip disconnected and the infusion of the red cells commenced. A whole blood donation can only be made every three months because the donor may become anemic due to loss of red blood cells. A plasma donor can safely donate every four weeks or even more frequently if he wishes, because his red cells are returned to him. The only change in his blood is in the plasma protein content, which can be made up in a matter of hours. Approximately 300 mils of plasma is obtained at each donation, so each regular plasmapheresis donor donates at least four liters of plasma a year. To ensure a constant and regular supply of the valuable plasma from these plasmapheresis donors, the next appointment is made before the donor leaves. The entire procedure takes about one hour 
including the refreshments which are necessary to quickly replace the fluid removed in the plasma donation. A unique relationship exists between the Red Cross Blood Transfusion Service, the State and Commonwealth Governments, and the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories, and has made possible many projects of community benefit. The Commonwealth Serum Laboratories prepare ABO blood grouping serum from plasma obtained from Red Cross plasmapheresis donors. Antibodies to the ABO system develop naturally in each person early in childhood. Thus, Group A people develop anti-B, an antibody against B blood cells. Similarly, Group B people develop anti-A, while Group O people develop both anti-A and anti-B. Plasma donors have a naturally high antibody level, which is boosted even higher by injecting them with an appropriate blood group substance. Without anti-A, anti-B and anti-AB typing sera, there could be no safe blood transfusion and no effective blood bank. Every patient requiring a blood transfusion must be accurately typed and every donation of blood must also be accurately grouped. Typing serum containing anti-A will agglutinate group A red cells. Anti-B typing serum will agglutinate group B red cells, while group O red cells will remain unagglutinated. Antibodies produced against viruses and bacteria, such as tetanus, are an essential part of the body's defences against infection. Injection of specially prepared antibodies called immunoglobulins can be used to help patients fight severe infections. Tetanus immunoglobulin is freely available to treat patients like this little boy who would otherwise be in grave danger after the accident which exposed him to the serious disease of tetanus. Another invaluable antibody is anti-RHD immunoglobulin, which is freely available in Australia to prevent RH hemolytic disease of the newborn. Without an injection of anti-RHD immunoglobulin, this RH negative pregnant woman could produce antibodies against her own unborn baby which could severely affect the infant, leading to anemia, brain damage, or even the death of the baby. In New South Wales, there are hundreds of RH-negative blood donors who volunteered to be deliberately immunised against the RH factor in order to supply plasma with a high concentration of antibody, from which CSL prepares anti-RHD immunoglobulin. Hundreds of thousands of people all over Australia owe a great debt of gratitude to these plasmapheresis donors who can never be adequately thanked. Their contribution is a symbol of all that is good and worthwhile in the community.